All right, this is block four over there, section three, the home front, starting with the Creel Committee. Um, one of the things that the United States did as soon as it entered uh, the First World War was it had to get public support completely behind the war effort. Uh, that there was still a lot of isolationist uh, sentiment in the United States, especially in the Midwest and in the West. Uh, and President uh, Wilson um, asked a journalist by the name of George Creel uh, to kind of spearhead the movement to bring the American people uh, behind the war in its entirety. And the so-called Creel Committee, basically what it was in charge of uh, was propaganda. Propaganda was not a dirty word uh, during World War I. Um, it became a dirty word kind of after World War II, but in World War I, all propaganda meant was the government's attempt to kind of get you on the same side as the government. If the United States was at war and there was, you know, hundreds of thousands of men risking their lives, uh, the government felt that everybody should kind of be on the same team and pulling for the same end, and the end was to win the war as quickly as possible, win the peace, and go home. Uh, George Creel kind of did two basic things when it came to his Creel Committee. First, he sent speakers out all over the country, 75,000 speakers spread by rail and subway and horse-drawn carriage and automobile and truck and train all throughout the country addressing, you know, crowds in large towns, small villages, farming communities, all explaining the reasoning why the United States was in the war and why it had to fight. Uh, the other thing that George Creel did was he commissioned a lot of art and created a lot of posters. And these posters were pretty much put up everywhere. And the posters depicted in a very, very um, obvious, not subtle way uh, that the Germans were kind of mad barbarians and the Americans uh, were good and decent people arguing for justice and liberty, and the Germans were, you know, the definition of the forces of evil. And we're going to go through a couple of, uh, of George Creel's posters. Uh, here's the first one, Destroy This Mad Brute, and have a good look at this mad brute. This mad brute is wearing a German helmet. He's carrying a club on which it says Kultur, German culture, um, and he is some kind of gorilla, holding in his hand some poor, stricken, bare-breasted woman who he is obviously about to take off and do nasty things with. And in order to prevent this mad brute uh, from doing what he wanted to do, you had to enlist in the American army. Here's another one. Wake up, America! Civilization calls. Every man, woman, and child. Have a look. Here is the United States, pictured as Columbia. Uh, the feminine kind of personification of the United States. She is sweet, she is innocent, um, and she needs you. Wake up, America. Stop sleeping. Help in the war effort. This is one of my favorites. This is a famous one. Um, Gee, I wish I were a man. I would join the Navy. And then down the bottom it says, Be a man and do it. Join the American Navy. Guys, join, even if the, if the girls could join the Navy, gentlemen, they would, so you really should also. Here's another anti-German one. If you can see, here's another kind of stereotypical German officer. He's got the German um, Pickelhaube uh, helmet on, and he's carrying a bloody sword that he has obviously just run through. If you look down at the bottom of the screen, he has used that sword to run through some innocent women and children and babies. Um, and if you want to do something about this, only the Navy can stop this. Join the Navy uh, and stop these atrocities. Um, this was a movie that was made by the Creel Committee uh, called Under Four Flags, where it showed the exploits of uh, four the four nationalities fighting uh, the Germans by the end of the war. All the way on the left is an Italian soldier, and then an American soldier is at the front. In the blue is a French poilu, a French soldier, and then a British Tommy over on the other end. And together, under four flags, the Allies would be victorious. Here we have another um, woman imploring you to be patriotic, say, uh, sign your country's pledge to save food. Uh, we're going to talk about that later on in this section, that you know there was days where you were supposed to give up certain foods uh, in order to help supply the army, and here this you know attractive woman is imploring you with her hands out, be patriotic, save food. <laughs> 
here's one um, author or uh, not authorizing but encouraging you to buy war bonds what's it say hold up your end of the bargain the boys are at the front women are working as nurses the least thing you can do is help raise money for the war by buying war bonds and then the most famous recruiting poster in all of American history was a George Creel uh, sponsored creation Uncle Sam looking sternly at you pointing his finger right at, right at, right at you and saying that he wants you he needs you uh, to join the army George Creel's committee was incredibly effective uh, the majority of the American people, although they might not have wanted to go to war in the first place, accepted the need for war by the end and supported the government throughout. There was not, not much uh, in the way of disloyalty or people trying to avoid the draft. Uh, people kind of bought in and got behind the government in its attempt, as Wilson said, to fight a war to end war. And George Creel played a very important part in it.